These notes go with section 4.6 in your text and address negative and zero exponents. The first section in these notes is simply some definitions for you. The first definition explains what it means when we put a zero as an exponent on a base. Notice that this says for any non-zero number a. What that means is that this rule works so long as the base, the big number down below, is not zero. So this rule says, for example, that 2 to the 0 power would be 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so long as that thing isn't 0. 3 to the 0 power is 1. 12,000 to the 0 power is 1. Any number to the 0 power is 1, so long as the base isn't 0. For any non-zero number a, that means that the base here can't be 0. And any integer n, that means the numbers that we put on the exponents aren't going to be fractions. So we're not going to have, for example, 2 to the 1 -third power or 2 to the pi power. The numbers that are our exponents are going to be integers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. And the way that I would encourage you to remember this is that a negative sign on the exponent, a negative exponent, moves that thing across the line, the fraction bar. So a negative sign, it goes across the line. It might be helpful to notice that we can rewrite the stuff on the left-hand side of this as being over 1. So a to the negative n power over 1 is the same as 1 over a to the positive n power. This negative sign on the exponent, it doesn't make the number be negative. It actually flips the whole number upside down. So let's do this with a little bit of actual numbers here. 4 to the negative third power is the same as 4 to the negative third power on the top is the same as 4 to the positive third power on the bottom. All right, let's simplify b. First, we're going to look at this part here. n to the 0 power is just 1, so I can replace n to the 0 power with 1 here. And then m to the negative fifth power on the top is the same as m to the positive fifth power on the bottom. And then let's see, in part c, we have to be real careful about which exponents go with which numbers. The negative 8 here is only attached to the y. It only goes with the thing in front of it. It might help us to write out the multiplication signs that are embedded in this problem. So this problem is 13 times x times y to the negative 8th power. And that negative 8 is only attached to the y. So the 13 and the x stay on top of the fraction bar. There's no reason for them to move. They don't have negative exponents attached to them. But y to the negative 8th on the top is the same as y to the positive eighth on the bottom. Please pause this presentation now and work through the four checkpoint questions. You do need to work through these and you will check these against the answer key when you're done. All right. Next, we're going to look at how we can use negative exponents to write equivalent expressions without a fraction bar. So first I want you to think about something that you did back in the exploring negative exponents. Remember, in your table, you used some patterns to identify that 2 to the negative first power was the same as 1 over 2. Although you didn't write it, there was an exponent of 1 there. So notice that these are two different ways of writing the same number. These two things are equal to each other. So in a math problem, whether I write 2 to the negative 1 or 1 over 2 to the positive 1, doesn't matter. These two are two different ways of writing the same thing. They are equivalent expressions. The directions for this section say write this expression without using a fraction bar. Well, what I can do is I can think of this as being 15 to the positive 1 power, and I remind myself that 15 to the positive 1 on the bottom is the same as 15 to the negative 1 on the top. This is no different than what we did when the bases were 2. And notice that in this case, we happen to have the equal sign is in essentially a different direction here. Here we started with 
a base with a negative exponent and rewrote it as a fraction. Here we're starting as a fraction and rewriting it as a base with a negative exponent. All right, again, we want to rewrite this so that there is no fraction bar. A to the third is going to stay on the top. There's no reason to move that. It doesn't have a negative exponent, and it's not on the bottom of the fraction bar. But c to the positive fifth on the bottom is the same as c to the negative fifth on the top. So these two expressions, even though they look different, these two expressions are equivalent. They have the same value. Please pause this presentation while you work through the checkpoint problems here. And again, please do check your answers to the checkpoint problems against the answer key I've provided. All right, next, we're going to see if some of these rules that we learned, for example, if you're multiplying numbers together with the same base, you can add their exponents. Let's see if those rules still work when the exponents are negative. So the first example we have here is 6 to the positive 12th times 6 to the negative 4th. Our rule says we can add the exponents 12 plus negative 4. 12 plus negative 4 is the same as 12 minus 4, and that's 8. That's 6 to the 8th power. Let's do this out the long way for a minute just to check and see if this actually makes sense. 6 to the 12th power is 6 times itself, 12 times, times 6 to the negative 4th. That means that there are 4 6's multiplied together on the bottom of this fraction, like that. And if I were to cancel out the factors of 1, 6 over 6, 6 over 6, 6 over 6, I would be left with 6 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th power. So it looks like the properties that we learned about how to deal with exponents when you're multiplying the numbers with the same base still work even if the exponents are negative. All right, let's see about if we're dividing. I have 6 to the negative 4th on the top, or sorry, 7n to the negative 4th on the top, and n to the positive 1 power on the bottom. The rule says I take the top exponent, that's negative 4, and I subtract the bottom exponent, minus 1. Top exponent minus bottom exponent. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. And I notice that it's set up above in the directions to write my answer using only positive exponents. Well, n to the negative 5 on the top is the same as n to the fifth on the bottom. Now, you're going to pause this presentation and you're going to do numbers 9 and 10 in the checkpoints. After that, you're moving on to the practice for section 4.6.